Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Swiss 15 and welcome back to another online battle for Medieval 2 Total War. This one is always, of course a free for all. Hala on aggressive planes actually, which is astonishing for me, but I want to test out this Mongol army build that I had been using at the time. And I really love this build, it's so much fun. The Mongols actually um provide a very good dynamic in the uh, Teutonic expansion, which is the only expansion you, you can play the Mongols as, but they are so awesome and actually pretty good. And a nasty surprise to anyone who isn't prepared for them. And I would say that this build and my current actually more updated build of the Mongols is best against any standard uh, common type of army, so like four archers, just general common builds, are, uh, it's, it's strength of defeating those kinds and not so much the other kinds. So uh, I highly recommend you all play some Mongols, they're actually really good, they're spearmen, do not try both them, like the dismounted heavy lancers, these guys over here, they actually have armor and attack, with, they can easily get armor and attack. And um, there is a cost increase after three, but you can still afford a good seven of the light lancers and heavy lancers together. And the heavy lancers have stats of what, 13, 15, which is uh, more attack and just one less defense than, or two less defense than the uh, dismount of funeral lights. So they're still going to lose in the end, but they are anti-cav and anti-charge, so it's pretty awesome. Um, and they're actually worth it, and their archers are not, are not to be joked around, especially when these guys, these foot archers are only 300 florins. You can get a lot. Uh, this is my current beard build, actually, with four of the foot archers, two dismount heavies with armor and attack. Um, this was three dismounted heavy lances with armor attack, and then four dismounted light lances with armor attack, which are, they are much more subpar with light lancers, then four cons guard with attack, a general attack, and two mongol heavy lances with attack. My more updated build uh, takes away one mongol heavy lancer in exchange for a uh, mongol light lancer. With attack, I get, I get four dismounted heavy lancers instead of four dismounted light lancers, and then just three dismounted light ones, so still seven, so slightly better infantry, and also I get a uh, two mongol light or uh, two mongol infantry which are also archers in replace of the foot archers and they only get attack on each of the archer units rather than attack and defense on the heavy archers i believe um or maybe not even some grades i just really compromised a lot to get some better archers overall now if we look at our my opponent played by jamie dodger uh, you all know Jamie Dodger, I hope. <laughs> He's playing as Portugal, which is probably a good uh, counter to this build, especially since they have such good infantry all around the board. Um, of course, this isn't a standard army, which is why I was I was actually happy to fight it, because I'm like, ooh, this is going to really test limits. Because I think the personal weakness of this army would be a rush army, because usually against any uh, balance builds, you can outshoot them with just the sheer amount of archers or rush them in the worst case scenario and just overpower those archers with the melee stats of your own. But uh, Jamie Dodger here, he's got, let's see, I think four units, four units of, uh, no, just two units of Portuguese knights, four units of Knights of Santiago, uh, General's Bodyguard, and two Conquistadors. So that brings his total cav up to, what is that, nine cavalry, which is, whew, a lot more than my seven. Um... <laughs> And over here, he's got one unit of peasants, and for his infantry, uh, he's got two units of conquistadors. Yes. No, three units of conquistadors, two units of dismounted Portuguese knights, and they seem to all have, or at least the Portuguese knights, no, no, none of them. They probably have attack, I assume that. That's a good assumption. Big assumption, at least. And he's got three units of Aventurios in the back, or maybe just two. Let's see, there's one flag there, another flag there. So, yeah, maybe just two. Just two. So he's got a really small infantry force. Only a total of seven units, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight infantry total, which is one more than my own, but he's got nine cavalry plus the meat shield. Then over here, the other fight we have going on is the Crimson Kaiser playing as France, and he's against the Venetians played by... The Mighty Zaz. I first thought I was going to be Captain. I forgot who played that battle. I was too busy focusing on my own at the point in time. But the Mighty Zaz has got four units of dismounted French archers. He's got three units of pike militia, which pikemen are very strong in this expansion, but um, I think he wasted a little bit too much money on them, giving them four or three armor upgrades, which is a lot of money, putting them around 600 for what they do with their morale. Probably not worth it to give that many upgrades if you're going to go with the pike militia strategy. Uh, he's got two units of, or four units of dismounted noble knights, a nice 200 unit, just like the Portuguese, dismounted Portuguese knights. He's got one serpentine, his general's bodyguard, and two units of mounted noble knights, and then three units, or four units of dismounted shepherd knights, which I would probably have gotten the other way around with, I don't know why, they probably have 
they're identical, but I feel like the Noble Knights are cooler. <laughs> then over here we have Zaz, where he's got two units of Venetian archers and two units of Pahavi's crossbowmen, uh, all sort of jumbled together, which is odd. He's got two units of Stratiots, one unit of Mailed Knights, actually two units of Mailed Knights, two units, or oh, four units of Stratiots, holy moly, got a lot, a lot, of, light, a lot of light calf, no standard, which I think is probably a bit of a mistake. He's got two units, uh, or four units of Dismount of Feudalites on the flanks, and in his center he's got four units of Venetian Heavy Infantry, and they actually do have arm upgrades, because the, uh, there's a glitch in the expansions where I think the, they look upgraded without armor, even though when they do, they look unupgraded, which is strange, but all right. And then finally, you have the General's Bodyguard way in the back. Uh, any upgrades on him? No, he completely unupgraded General. So, well, let's just get into the fight. Now, ours is going to start up a lot more quickly, considering that uh, Jamie Dodger did bring a rush army. You can see he's already rushing over his cavalry. Holy moly. And you can see that I'm like, okay, got to deal with the rush. Let's get my infantry in front. I decided to put my archers in tight formation, which I don't know why. Probably to make them a little bit better for a melee, but that makes them more susceptible to charges. But I guess I am making my lines a bit thinner, which is smart, I guess. <laughs> I am so smart. Uh, don't don't take my words too narcissistically. I'm just trying to see what I'm doing and interpret it uh, at a much later date. Usually I don't know what's going on in my head at different times. And you can see Zaz just slowly marching up his archers. So uh, we have Jamie Dodger. Uh, he himself was kind of curious how Spearmen react in our charge. So he decides that actually he's going to charge to him. And I'm just like, oh, this is going to be nice. And I already got my archers firing. Actually not doing that much damage yet. Okay, there's one, two, three, four. A couple of units actually dying, which is nice. They don't have armor piercing these bows, but look at that. Um, pretty good charge. He takes out the unit down to half, but the cavalry itself taken down to half at the same time, and it's wavering. This other unit here charged into two, and it breaks right away. Actually, it's two units of cav. Bring my uh, one down. To the light lancers can't really handle the charge as much as the heavy lancers. Look, the heavy lancers, pretty much untouched. They've got 20 units dead taking out two cavalry units together. Uh, so Spearmen can handle charges quite well. Do not underestimate them. Uh, nothing is going on over there. Just a little bit jumpy of some here. And we got my cav. I went in to take out some of these uh, infantry because I think that's the real problem is I have to take out his infantry. And you can see some cav engagements. And I don't know why it's so jumpy right now. Oh my god. Some random parts of these are just like freeze frame and then go. And you can see we've got some cav engagements going on the flanks. He did get my heavy archers on this side, which I moved up a bit. Um, I think because I want to like make sure my infantry line can hold up. Yeah, I want to make sure he can't outflank me with his infantry, which is probably bad. I should probably get those war guys more protected by spearmen. At the same time, you can see I got some cons guard now charging uh, into his lines. I want to take out as many of these powerful infantry as I can. Bam! That's a really good charge, and why is it freezing up on me? Holy moly, please stop. Okay. And you can see he's routed some of my cons guard back here. He's got some cavalry turning to the fight, but I just want to take out his infantry because I'm pretty sure my spears can hold up to his cavalry no problem. You can see he's got now some Portuguese knights coming at me from the rear where I don't have any cav guarding me. I'm too busy trying to take out these conquistadors and such. Don't want to outflank me and crush my infantry force. And uh, my archers just firing wherever they want. Right now it seems they're focusing fire on this Aventurio unit. Um... His general's bodyguard still in fine condition. My Mongol heavy lancers are behind the enemy lines, but depleted number. Uh, you can see he's pretty much broken through here. And oh, what a charge! Getting taking out my entire unit of Mongol lights, pretty much, or Mongol foot archers, I mean, from behind. But I want to get my bodyguard right behind there. My general clean up these inferior cavalry with a nice rear charge. But he is charging straight through, and he's trying to uh, get a good attack on my archers, but they are shaken, so I'm hoping to rout them. You can see over here, my Khan's guard did win this fight over here against some cavalry, and I'm trying to stop these conquistadors at all costs, because I don't want them charging my men. So these Khan's guard gonna go in for a charge. Counter charge! Oh, they didn't bring out their lances, these uh, conquistadors. One unit still getting around, but sort of caught in, and I'm going for a flank with uh, my bodyguard, I believe. Yes, that is the bodyguard, but they are too fast, these conquistadors, and avoid the fight. Over here, you can see a lot of his infantry was uh, pretty much wiped out by the, the combination of my archers and uh, cab charges. He never really got to form up too many lines, so it made him quite 
easy to actually get some rear charges and then take out the other ones before they did any damage. You can see where the actual fight, there's no actual real line here. It's a more like random blobs of troops. Somewhere here, a bit of a line for them, but that was mostly from the cab charges. And now you can see his general going in the rear of my dismounted heavy archers, and they're going to get a really good charge, actually, because my spearmen are not in formation. They actually take out the majority of this unit right here. Uh, both those units, actually. And I'm trying to start focusing fire on this general. I want to kill as many of these guys as I can. You can see a few of them actually dropping, which is nice, but still in decent number. Uh, if we look at the other side, just a skirmish going on. You can see the... Actually, the Serpentine uh, just took a, got a nice fire out, so that's always nice to see. And then... Going in for a charge here, I'm trying to take out all these uh, conquistadors, and they are routing. I just want to get out the infantry out of the way. But you can see now Jamie Dodger's got his conquistadors running amok, amok taking out my foot archers, which is uh, terrible news for me because they cannot handle any melee of any sort, especially against a cav charge. So I'm just doing whatever I can to trap these conquistadors, but oh, there goes the next unit of Mongol lights, and I'm trying to get my spearmen now to get some good responses and protect these archers. But it's a bit too little too late by the time I realize what's going on. He's going to get his last cavalry to charge in and take out my Mongol foot archers. And I am just depressed about this because these guys are so cheap and effective but dying so rapidly to something that I could have possibly easily avoided. So good move by Jamie Dodger here. But as you can see at this point, it's a little bit too late for him to really derive victory. I've got too many spearmen against his few... Uh, bits of cavalry that I left around, and I still got my own cavalry, including a pretty healthy bodyguard unit, um, just completely untouched. So I I'm fine with the developments here, and he's still going to go for another charge, and <laughs> still going to get more of my Mongol lights, but Mongol foot arches. But at this point, there's not enough of them to um, really make a difference in late game. I guess that's what I probably my rationale, or just I couldn't even block them. Doesn't matter. I'm trying to get my spearmen though to catch them. This unit's probably about to break, knowing conquistadors. Oh, no, they're going to escape, actually. Not enough arrows. Not enough arrows. But you can see I'm still chasing after his general with some cons guard, just trying to get a good charge when I can and stall this unit enough so that uh, my spears can conquer it. And then here comes some conquistadors. Not the best charge in the world, actually. And my spearmen are just like, all right, this is time for you to die, conquistadors. And I'm pretty sure this is when they route. They have to. Come on. Come on. Route. Nope, nope, they escape again. Wow. Alright, that's that's balls. <laughs> that's balls. And here we have his general almost caught, I think, here. Uh, my my own general's bodyguard pursuing him. And it seems he's gonna go for one more charge. Eh. Oh, the conquistadors actually did route it. Probably finally from missile fire. But where's he gonna go? Oh, for the archers, of course. No, no, he decides not to. Oh. <gasps> Oh yeah, I remember what he does now. So now I'm just chasing after him with my cab. I'm forming up my spearmen to make a nice little protection around my archers. The few that are left, the groups of ones and twos. So one, 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 and two. So the high surviving unit is two after all those cab charges. And as you can see, his general's just trying to play a nice little game of chicken here. Running away from me, essentially. Oh. It was frustrating. I was like, come on, Jamie. Come back here. We we're on a voice chat, of course. And he's just being a coward. Oh, going in for a charge against my Mongol heavy lancers, completely isolated from the rest of my cavalry. They take out uh, a good unit here, so the, that's a good trade-off so far. Oh, wait. They take down two. Take down three. Wow. They actually outmatched this unit overall, and it's down to only uh, three men left. And I have all this cap pursuing him. And I think... I think this is the point where Jamie Dodge decides, okay, I'm not going to fight you. And actually, he starts running in this general direction to the safety of friends. Or what he thought would be the safety of friends. Um, so over here, we can now skip over to this battle. You can just see that I pretty much cleaned up Portugal. And I did surprisingly well, considering uh, I was fighting a Reich army. I was surprised at my own, the army itself. Um, possibly it was due to the fact that he did some cav charges to me early on. Maybe that was it. Um, other than that, maybe it's just the cab charges on the infantry made it impossible for him to get any leeway against my spearmen for the late game battle. <sighs> but here we have a skirmish, and it seems that. Hmm. 
it looks like Zaz is actually winning to a degree, taking out, uh, it seems, a French archer here, or it was just shifted over more so, but he took a good beating out. Now it seems he's trying to target the Serpentine, which I would not condone. Especially, well, already I would not condone sitting around. I would have rushed the moment I saw the Serpentine. But uh, now we got some Noble Knights charging by uh, France, and I think Zaz might be committing, committing too much cavalry here. I know he's sending them in opposite directions, maybe to, like, surround this unit and kill it quickly, but I feel like the amount of missile fire that it'll take in the process, which is probably what the Crimson Kaiser wants, is just not worth it. But, uh, I'd probably send a maximum of two, probably just one. Just a male knight, most likely, just to hold these guys off and kill as many as I can and focus my archers to do the rest of the work. But here we got more cav coming out, finally, by the, uh, Crimson Kaiser. He seems to be committing a lot, and Zaz did take out this unit for, with relatively few casualties, I guess. Um, he actually, overall, I think he took the same amount of casualties as he killed, considering they are light cav. Um, some Stratats now going head-to-head -head for some charges. Oh, nope, they're actually going to pause, and this could be deadly for these Stratats who are not very good at just taking, handling damage too well. Ooh, just a line battle, and this is something that you don't necessarily want your Stratiots in because they cannot quite handle it. Mailed Knights maybe more so, they're a little bit better in the melee, but so not so. And then you can still see the General's Bodyguard coming in of uh, Portugal, and I'm sending in my Cons Guard afterward. I'm just like, oh my god, I'm gonna get shot to bits in this this process of trying to kill him. And here I go, go in for a charge, and I'm just, I just want to kill him. And uh, this poor unit of Cons Guard... <laughs> Not handling this too well, his general is going to be fine, and my cons guard route, and his general is just like, ha ha, escaped, but not quite. And here we got, oh my god, the Stratiots completely broke through, which is to be expected, considering, you know, they're Stratiots against some of the best heavy cav in the game. This unit seems to be getting a little bit caught out of position, this cav could die. There goes the Portuguese general, <laughs> shot to death. <laughs> and here, Zaz seems to get a a little bit better of a process. His strat's going a little bit better against this heavy cav, considering he's got support of some armored surgeons behind him. Um, other than that, I think he's capoting, competing, oh, com capiting, I can't even speak, committing, with an M, committing too much into this line battle, straight up in the front, uh, going against toe-to-toe -to -toe with his pike militia. At least this one dropped some of its pikes, which makes it a little bit better, to, easier to beat, not better to beat. But uh, this one, just n you're not going to get any leeway like this. This uh, is actually going to kill more of your men for such a cheap unit, an effective unit. Well, not cheap with the armor upgrades, but it would have been if uh, Crimson Guys had not put so many armor upgrades. Maybe just one would suffice for them, or experience it alone. You can see these guys can't even move forward against the pikemen, and this is why pikemen are so effective. Look, just stab and stab. Eventually, this guy's going to give up and die. Oh, he, he might get a kill. He might. Oh, he got a kill. Whew, they're dropping their pikes. I'm so surprised. Usually there's just a giant impenetrable wall of spikes or, or pikes. I really, like, when is the day that I'll make a little video where I actually speak English? That day will never come. A nice rear charge by Crimson Kaiser. His cab advantage is now coming into fruition. These uh, heavy infantry will not last long, even though they are feudal knights against a rear charge and some noble knights here. And here you can tell, see one already routing, the other one's wavering, probably to drop soon anyway. Uh, Zaz himself got his general idle right now, probably went for a charge somewhere or against some other cav, but oh no, here comes the heavy cav of the French. Pretty much the only thing that is uh, causing Zaz to lose right now is his loss in the actual cav fight. And you can see these... Uh, Venetian heavies cannot handle it, especially without a standard. They're going to rout the moment they see some cav charging at them when they can't even go against some pike militia. Still in pretty good number, 34 and 44, respectively. He is uh, getting some leeway here, breaking through, but doesn't have enough. His general's getting shot to bits now. Poor guy. I really wish he would take out the Serpentine. The Serpentine uh, later on bugs me because I'm so far away trying to reform myself when I... Um, I end up having to fight Crimson Kaiser, as you can see, because he there's just no way at this point that Zaz can really recover. He's got a blob of infantry, mostly of poor morale, which uh gonna get rear charged. You can see they're already shaken, even though instead they're in such high number, and now all the shots coming in, plus flanking infantry nonetheless. Not even just cavalry, but flanking infantry as well. 
probably cause these guys to run out pretty quickly unless Zaz can break through miraculously, which is always doubtful. And um, let's see what happens. Oh, another rear charge. And there goes one Venetian Heavy Infantry unit and the other follows it for right behind. That is the end of the Venetians. Just the general really fighting left against some dismounted French archers. And that's probably not going to heat him too much anyway. And here comes the cap to support his archers and take out the general once and for all. And I think we all know what's going to happen to this poor guy. Ooh, he's just getting stabbed. He's not even fighting back. He's just like, kill me now. Oh, no, he decides. He found some heart. Oh, wow, he's going on a rampage. Two cavalry and an archer all at the same time. Mm, impressive. Come on, keep chopping down. Who can you kill? Apparently no one. Oh, there was one. This general is putting up a good fight, actually. I'm impressed. He's the last man, and there he goes. Vlu, the, our view is blocked by this annoying little um, cav here. This guy, I think it was. Ooh, what a jerk, blocking our view. But now let's speed it up. You're just going to see a very long march. Zazimut defeats it at this point, and uh, the Venetians are gone. You can see the French forces in pretty high number. His cavalry exceeds my own numbers, his infantry exceeds my numbers, and I think I have a little bit more archers, maybe. Uh, if you look at my force, let's see. Got mostly infantry left, so just a few bits of cavalry, mainly my general unit, in pretty high number. Beyond that, he's I've got my light lancers and some heavy lancers in high number, the rest pretty beaten up. And as for my archers, I got one need heavy archers at 35, and the rest are one or two and one eight unit. So, uh, together about 40 archers. If we look at his archer numbers, let's see, uh, 19, 10 and 10, so that's about 40 himself. Oh wait, there's more there. Plus another unit of 40. I think they're out of ammunition though, which is helpful to me. Uh, and also, of course, serpentine which is going to be bombarding me on this journey over here. Oh my god, this I never remembered how annoying this Serpentine got. Look, taking out some of my bodyguard unit. I'm just not- And there goes my general! Oh my god, the maniacal laugh that Crimson Kaiser had. It was just going on and on. I swear for at least five minutes he was cackling his evil cackle. Going, ha ha! I can't even do it. I wish- I should get a recording of him doing it and put it in right now, but I probably won't because I'm too lazy. And at this point, I'm like, all right, gotta rush forward. I can't handle this circuit and fire, but it's too little too late. My general's already uh, dead on the field right here. Poor guy. Very unlucky. I, mean, I guess all the people impaled by the serpent shots are poor guys overall. But I'm going into the charge. You can see my few foot archers that are left charging in bravely. And I got some dismount heavy archers that I want to do some fire with. Got my men in use formation, but I'm going back in a tight for this final charge because I think I'm close enough, I guess. And I'm going in for a charge with my general. I think, hey, I guess I can take out some of his archers, maybe. Silence them. Silence the fire, maybe. And some of the infantry as well, if I'm lucky. But in hindsight, probably not the best strategy. I'm only going to take out a few of them, really. And at this point, my general's not going to last too long. Completely surrounded, already shaken overall, but I'm sending in my spearmen, trying to envelop his lines with my superior uh, ability to, you know, not engage in just a straight up line battle like he can. He kind of needs to want, he wants to layer his forces more so, so I'm going in trying to get some flanks in here. Actually get some mine into the serpentine and silence that, that SOB. <laughs> and you can see my uh, spearmen actually doing a good number and taking out the majority of this pike pike wall that is now uh, pretty much down except for this unit right here which is still holding strong the rest doing fine a bit of an archer skirmish going above you can see some arrows on both sides flying across but at this point my cavalry is non-existent and he's going to start targeting my archers first and foremost and already have some routing by some dismounted heavy lancers which I was surprised to be see as the first unit to run especially after getting some good uh, attack against that um, archer, not archer, serpentine unit, I'm sorry. And I got some units over here actually going from behind the lines, trying to take out his archers quickly, maybe even route something. But he's got his general right by, so it's probably not going to happen. Despite this mass amount of spearmen. Woo -hoo. And these archers probably not going to hold up too long against some dismounted heavy lancers, so I'll cut through them. More so without too many casualties, hopefully. 
But uh, you can see my archer's completely outmatched. My general's bodyguard did come back, but my general's been long dead anyway, you know, from the serpentine and everything. Which uh, really doesn't matter to me. It matters a lot to me, actually. It made me sad. And I'm trying to get a rear charge on this guy, uh, to prevent this rear charge, actually. Prevent the rear charge, yeah. And you can see he did pretty well cutting down a lot of these uh, Shervy Knights overall, but his general's bodyguard is actually a much more effective one, breaking the center of my line. Uh, the morale is just not good without a general. <laughs> or even with the rear charge. Actually, they're doing pretty well considering that they don't have a general, I guess. And they are fighting against some superior heavy infantry, but a nice charge here. Probably going to be the last of my spearmen ever do for this fight. Uh, yep, there they go. The spearmen are routing. I just got one unit left. Nope, they're gone too. Okay, that's all my spearmen routing. I got some archers back here, and I got my general's bodyguard going in for some final charging. But they're going to take a lot of casualties to this uh, archer fire. And look at the charge. Completely pathetic. Okay. Yeah, they actually do something, and they route. However... And then we just have that final unit to die, so watch it in fast speed. Come in. Enjoy. Ah, uh, the high speed massacre. <sighs> I can still hear the cackle of the Crimson Kaiser as he saw my general die on the field. That was, that was unbearable. But as you can see, I got 906 kills and 116 captures, second best of the game. Actually, most kills overall, but not most uh, casualties uh, inflicted. That goes to the Crimson Kaiser with 880 plus the 293 captures. Uh, Jamie, Dodger, and Mighty Zaz both doing pretty well for losing with over 600 kills each. So very nice job there. If you take a look at my stats here, um, most of my kills go to some Mongol heavy lines with 78 or some Mongol heavy archers with 70. Ooh. That's pretty good. Um, other than that, it's pretty widely dispersed. And another 70 going to some heavy lancers dismounted. So that's pretty nice. So, so thank you all for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Goodbye, my friends.